and uh, say that y'all were speaking down there. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? I was like, this guy was two doors down from me. I was like, I've been like trying so hard to get. If I knew, I mean, when they, like it just, I mean, I was down at our company Christmas party. We have a Boca Raton office. Yeah. And, you know, my buddy was like, hey, you know, Gary V. <laughs> actually didn't know who he was. And, and he's like, he's like, it's a good, it's this big speaking thing. You want to do it? I got you in. And then when they interviewed me, they're like, do you know anybody else? I'm like, I mean, I gave him a couple of people, but yeah, yeah. if I knew you, no, I mean, yeah. no, it's all, it kind of for me. It actually, I kind of like it better that way. It's kind of that underdog of like I'm coming in knowing that I wasn't chosen to speak. Good job. Yeah. Pressing your vibe. Give us our daily bread. I want the whole basket. Cause I'm a hustle till I get it or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way. Not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward. Right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry cause it's time for the daily bread. All right, welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. This is episode 52. Uh, I am Tyler Harris. We've got two special guests here. We've got Robert Donovan and Ryan Alford, and we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! This is episode 52. Uh, I'm super excited to have these guys here, which they will introduce themselves uh, here in just a second. But just to give you a quick reminder of why in the world we do this podcast, uh, for two reasons. Number one is to show support and appreciation for salespeople. Every single person on this planet is a salesperson. You're either selling yourself or you're selling to yourself on what you need to do every day. And second is to actually give you some tangible, real tips, advice, uh, stuff that you can actually take, go implement. Now, we do have two special guests here and the reason for that, we've got uh, an event coming up uh, this week called Agent 2021. I still don't actually know what that means. Do you guys know what that actually means? I mean, it's three years from now. You know, I was doing my content research and it seems like Gary or someone at Vayner did something like, we should be talking about what content Content and marketing would be like in 2021 and not 2017 or yeah. something. That was the most I could find. But, I mean, uh, you would think there would have been some piece of content that would have come out. Yeah, right. 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 This, is why, this is where we got the name, but yeah. So that's three year up. plan. Three year <laughs> yeah, plan. It's a three right. year. It is now a three year plan. Uh, we're going to be there as well. We're going to be vlogging the entire deal. They're going to be um, heading up um, one of the panels down there. Uh, is that, that's going to be for the automotive yep. industry, right? Yep. And so this event is specifically targeted for uh, real estate, insurance, automotive, and travel. And the goal of the event is to get p people to where they are marketing like the year that we live in, or apparently in how we need to live in 2021. So let's start with you. Who are you? Hey, I'm Ryan Halford. <laughs> <laughs> Howard and I go back a while. Uh, I think we're connected to our ex-wives. Yes. <laughs> Great setup. We can edit that out right here. <laughs> I'm the CMO of Dom360 and Donovan and Contology. We have three brands. It's not as confusing as it sounds. We're an ad agency. You've got an automotive background and a marketing background. So yeah, it's kind of perfect, exactly. perfect blend. It came together. Robert and I met about 18 months ago and uh, it's a good marriage. I've 15 years in the ad agency business, managing some of the largest brands in the country. Let's talk about what you just said. So you saw this wave of digital marketing coming. Mm -hmm. To me, that's that's so incredible because that, I mean, that's what Gary always talks about, being able to see these trends before they're actually happening or before it's actually uh, popular enough to where people are, are using it on a large scale. Mm -hmm. um, what did that look, what did that wave look like to you? What were some of those, um, signs that you started seeing pop up that said, hey, maybe we need to go in this direction and, and make a career out of this. It was little nibbles. Uh, my average client spent 50 to 100 grand a month with me, sometimes 300 grand, but it was replacing some of the traditional marketing with a little piece of digital and a little piece of digital. And I was like, the agency was making so much money that I was at and they didn't really, they weren't concerned about that. But I was like, wait a minute, this is a crack in the armor and there's something to be had here. And it was fertile ground. So when you said that they were, they were spending a little bit here and there on the digital side, were they, they were doing that somewhere else. They were doing it outside of gotcha. us because we didn't have the capabilities. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. And so, and, and that's, that's kind of what um, Gary always talks about too, is he talks about these clients that they have and 
a lot of marketing agencies, I think, are making the mistake of like forcing it down clients or potential clients' throats. Like you have to do this, you have to go hard on Facebook and Instagram, you have to do this, and trying to get them to change their entire realm of belief that they've had up until that point versus, hey, let's do what you want to do, but let's add a little bit of this. Right. And let's see how that works in comparison to it. And then let's add a little bit more, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more. But so many people right now, it seems like, are coming in, they're saying, okay, what's your current marketing plan? All right, let's take that off the table. Here's what we're actually going to do. And they're like, no, we're not going to do that. Yeah. But going in at a little bit at a time seems to be the, the way to do it. I'm a, in my day to day, I'm a transactional guy. And I, I love the fact that you can implement a marketing effort and then actually see in the number of cars sold. Like it, it, right. there's so many where you're right. Like it is this intangible goodwill, like branding awareness where it's like, Hey, we spent X amount on the digital side. What did what was the return on that? And sometimes sometimes it's so hard uh, to get that. But I think a lot of what they're I'm assuming they're going to be talking about at this event uh, this week is compared to what? Like compared to your traditional advertising that people are doing? Like how, well, how do you how do you how do you get the return on that magazine or that billboard or that this and this and that and that? So it's the same problems that people have with traditional advertising as they're doing with digital marketing. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, I think it's really I mean. The setup that I've read and what I see this as is spending your dollars where consumers are spending their attention. Yeah, yeah. And so, whether that's, I mean, how much is four hours a day? The average, like the prolific Facebook users? I mean, I think know, I'm Facebook, like four hours an hour. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, four hours an hour. It's what it feels exactly. like. But there's, but there's been yeah. their time here, and you know, dealerships in particular, I mean, they've yeah. come around the bend, you know, but. They've been slow on the uptake, yeah. you know, with yeah. with content, uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. I mean, even to this day, if I walk into a dealership and say, "What's your Instagram strategy?" It's kind of a little bit of a foreign I look. Yeah. And the reality is, you've got consumers spending their time. You want to talk to millennials. You don't want cars to go away and millennials not to care about getting a driver's license. Mm -hmm. Well, then we need to speak to them the way they want to be spoken to, yeah. or just generate the content. You know, it's not going to happen. It's not like we're going to take you know, 100% of the budget and drop, mm -hmm. and drop it immediately in Facebook and yeah. Instagram. But you've got to start dabbling a little bit in these mediums. What are some tangible advice that you could give someone that works for a dealership and maybe that dealership hasn't bought in completely to the whole 2021 uh, marketing strategies, but that salesperson has 100% bought in and they know exactly where the eyeballs are and they know the things that their dealership should be doing, but maybe they can start doing at a smaller level. What would you tell that salesperson that they can start doing as an individual salesman to bring or salesperson to bring uh, people into the dealership to see them? You know, there used to be B2B and B2C and all that. It's really B2H, business to human. <laughs> And that's what I tell salespeople and that's what I tell uh, the dealers that we talk to is you're talking about human beings yeah. and their human beings are spending their attention and their time in different places. And you need to be in those places, but salespeople can really nurture their customer base uh, with reviews, uh, with word of mouth. I mean, it, there's some just tried and true tactics mm -hmm. and things that can happen, but use the mediums that are at our hand. You've got Facebook Messenger, you've got Instagram, you've got all of these platforms. As Gary says, we've never been more empowered. Yeah, and absolutely. so the dealer doesn't know how empowered they are to reach these customers in ways. And nurture that base and it will bear fruit with developing uh, your sales cycle. So do you have any ideas on kind of what's coming in the next in the next 10 years? It's already you? here. It is. <laughs> it's already here. All right, let's just take the example of QR codes. Yep. All right. But gosh, how old are those things? <laughs> 15 old. years old, mm -hmm. right? How you know? So you, if you look at the Rogers adoption curve and you just apply it, you got your, your your early adopters here at the bottom of the bell curve, your early majority, and then you go over the curve, you got your late majority, and then your laggards. It's the same with with technology. So the technology that's tomorrow's technology has already been invented. It's all there. It's just a matter of when is it? When is the market going to be ready? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you really just have to be in it. And when, just like Gary says, when there's a new app or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. you just, you dive into it and say, okay, yeah, I know all about that now. Whether or not I have it, I have it in my brain and I can put it on the shelf for now and pull it off when I have it. Yeah. So it's already here. You just gotta figure out when it's gonna be right. And that's, that's you're so right. And that's what he's been talking so much lately about VR and AR. It's yeah. like, 
it's not here yet to consumer, right? You know, but but going at it and, and seeing what can we invest in now so that when it does become uh, consumer, uh, when when the, the average consumer is using it on a daily basis, where you're so far ahead of the curve, it's so funny to me that concept. And, and you mentioned it. You know, when these new platforms, these new social media platforms come out, and these new technologies come out, and and people talk about like, I don't have time. You know, I, you know, who has all the time to do all this stuff? And I always love to turn it back to him, like, oh, who has time not to? Like, what if one of those is the next biggest thing, and you're the yeah. early, like you said, the early adopter on that platform? I mean, it's what Gary's done with everything. I do have one <laughs> uh, product or uh, innovation hack for uh, for your yes. viewers. Love uh, you know, product hunt, the application. Product. So if you're looking for the applications and services that are out, mm -hmm. there's an application called Product Hunt, and uh, it gets votes in the, on the day of how you know innovative or helpful it is. It's really? a great way to learn about applications and right services. Now. This is kind of like the closing of the podcast. Where can people find you guys? We are on the major channels, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We're big on LinkedIn. We appreciate you having us on here. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's no, good. Right. This is awesome. So guys, um, I hope you enjoyed Agent <laughs> Agent 2021. I hope you enjoyed <laughs> the Sales Wolves podcast. Um, I hope you got something out of that. I know a lot of you guys, we've been getting a ton of feedback from people that are in the automotive industry. So this was kind of perfect uh, set up for that. But uh, with that, this was episode 52 of the Sales Wolves podcast. I am Tyler Harris. We've got Ryan Alford, Robert Donovan, and we all are the Sales Wolves. Ow! Ow!